And like in the other sections, uh, we're going to start this off with a question. This is a 60-year-old female who underwent a hybrid total hip with good position of the implants and postoperatively is instructed not to extend, adduct, and externally rotate the hip in order to prevent dislocation. Which approach was likely performed? So this is actually a combination of both rehab and uh, surgical approach. You can see the options. I have to confess, I hadn't seen the Fanisteel approach mentioned in orthopedics in quite some time. And the uh, correct answer to this is the Smith-Peterson anterior approach, which we'll go into in some detail um, in a few minutes. So this segues into the rehab section right here. I'm just going to emphasize predominantly the stuff that's highlighted in blue. And uh, those are, uh, situ or, excuse me, those are, I think, key phrases and uh, snippets of information which are uh, been either uh, present on previous in-training examinations or the self-assessment exam. And having just gone through this in the last 18 months, I can tell you that uh, a lot of this stuff does, in fact, appear. So rehab requires a coordinated effort on both the part of the surgeon, the therapist, occupational therapist, and the like. And it can be broken down into the phases, as you see, pre-op, inpatient, inpatient care, either in the form of rehab or skilled nursing facilities, or in the outpatient home therapy uh, arena. Unfortunately, preoperative uh, physical therapy has not been shown to be improvement uh, in postoperative outcomes which from a bundled payment uh, perspective actually is probably good news if you are in fact controlling the bundle. Preoperative teaching focuses a lot on several issues including uh, hip precautions and obviously it's going to be useful to discuss this in the context with the approach that's going to be utilized. Uh, at our institution about 90 percent of the hips are done via posterolateral lateral approach with the remaining 10% done uh, through the uh, direct anterior approach. So in our preoperative uh, class, we essentially uh, advocate the postures and poses to avoid, which includes in the early postoperative period flexion beyond 90 degrees, internal rotation, and adduction across the midline. Those precautions are in effect typically for the first four weeks, at which point they are relaxed. If, in fact, you're using an anterolateral approach, one would advocate avoidance of extension, extreme external rotation, and adduction. And the classic way to attain these forbidden postures would be, for example, when one takes their leg off the side of the bed and, unfortunately, it drops to the floor and actually uh, accomplishes all of those positions, setting you up for an anterior dislocation. And finally, direct the anterior approach, avoid bridging, extension, extreme, external rotation, and adduction, similar to what was just mentioned before, in order to mitigate and minimize the risk of anterior instability. Pain management's been obviously in the news a lot. Preoperatively, uh, one of the things that uh, we spend a lot of time uh, doing is uh, advocating a reduction in uh, opioid consumption. We actually require all patients on opioid medications to be seen by our chronic pain service prior to admission to the hospital. Intraoperatively, I think the data is clear that regional anesthesia is probably the preferred method. And supplemental periarticular multimodal drug injections have clearly played a role in reducing postoperative pain and reducing the requirement for opioid medication. In addition, postoperative multimodal drug therapy, typically with the use of supplemental anti-inflammatories, has really, uh, I think, uh, become sort of the gold standard of uh, postoperative management. In patient acute care, physical therapy goals are to not only sit but stand upright, working on gait training. And the discharge home criteria, independent ambulation with some assistive device, independent transfers as well as appropriate home assistance, spouse, family, visiting nurse. And again, I think in this uh, day and age of uh, bundled payments, as well as uh, taking ownership, and especially being cognizant of the potential 
financial risk that hospitals and institutions face with readmissions, I think it's really important to actually take uh, into account the home assistance uh, program and what's available. Um, inpatient extended care, earlier discharge to rehab from hospital has been associated with improved outcomes. Uh, the source of this uh, information this has been a highlight from the ortho bullets. Um, there's some data that might actually question this. We've been able to demonstrate that the discharge criteria as well as the discharge outcome to home is as good, if not better, than a skilled nursing or inpatient rehab facility. In terms of, again, on uh, total hip rehab, outpatient care, return to sports, I think traditionally low impact exercises have been preferred. Golf, as it's played by uh, our previous speaker, may in fact be a full contact sport, but in general, I think it is important to have these discussions since golf is extremely popular, that handicap shows minimal change after total hip and may in fact increase after total knee. High impact exercises have been uh, purported to be associated with increased revision rates. In terms of driving recommendations, I think many of these are fairly self-evident. A study from our institution demonstrated that driving reaction time returned to its preoperative state approximately three to four weeks after right total hip replacement. The other caveat is to make sure that your patients are not taking opioid medication, which would negate, quite frankly, their insurance coverage should they, in fact, get into a motor vehicle accident. Return to work within a month if non-manual labor, and obviously is tailored to the individual patients. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like. We'd love to hear your thoughts and what you'd like to see next in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and follow us on social media.